All right, patch point 6.17. Um, I am going to try and barrel through this faster. It's a pretty big patch, but uh, I'm hungry, so I'm going to try and go through this pretty fast. <coughs> uh, Annie change. This doesn't really mean anything. It's not going to change anything about the core playstyle of Annie, so that mean, doesn't mean anything. Ash nurse. Uh, I think she'll still be all right um, for picking compositions. Uh, she's gonna have a little less like damage during her Q since it lasts one second lower, and the damage on her ult is meaningless since you don't use it for damage anyway. Uh, I think she'll still be all right and viable. Corky change. It's just a fix. Diana buffs. I don't know why. I think Diana's broken by design, and I think she needs a rework. But that being said, she got a buff anyway. I don't think this is gonna make her meta, but. This may introduce more Diana players, which I'm not excited for because I hate Diana. But I, I can't say this is going to make her like a standout champion. Um, Draven buffs. This isn't, you know, small buff. Cooldown. Uh, increase at level 1. Mana down. Goes, goes, the cooldown goes down over the ranks. Doesn't really mean anything. Draven's going to be the same champion. This change is won't affect his win rate or his play rate. Um, a lot of these changes are just really small changes, which is why I can go fast. Uh, Evelyn, our cooldown, 30 seconds at rank 1. Like, this is actually a pretty big change. 30 seconds is a really big cooldown, and uh, I think this might just spark a bunch more Evelyn players. I don't think this will make her meta, but you can expect a lot more Evelyn players. 30 seconds in between ultimates is a lot more. And you might actually see Evelyn played now, other than like Moon. Um, Ezreal buffs. He doesn't really play off attack speed anyway because he's more of a caster ADC. So this change doesn't mean too much. Uh, but it is a buff nonetheless. Maybe you'll start seeing more attack speed builds. I doubt it, but uh, this makes his late game even better. And it's already really good. So. Ezreal might start getting played more again, especially with the other AD carries being nerfed. Gangplank nerfs, thank god. Uh, base health down by 40, W mana up by 20 at all ranks, and ult longer cooldown and more dam and less damage. I like these changes because I think GP is really busted. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy about these changes. It, I don't think this will remove GP like from the meta. Actually, you know what? It could remove him from the meta, but it won't remove him from, like, a champion pool. He's still going to be viable, like, purely because of, like, the mechanic of GP and how fast he gains gold and global pressure without having to be there. This will just make it so, like, GP is just generally worse than he was before. There's nothing about this change that makes GP, like, any better. It's just a bunch of nerfs, which is great because, like, like, I ban GP all the time, and maybe, you know, I can use that ban for something else now. And, like, maybe if GP goes through and champion select, it won't be so oppressive. I think he'll still be alright. Uh, his play rate will go down and win rate, but I think he'll still be played. By a few people. But not, like, a perma ban anymore. Gragas nerfs. These are pretty big. You max E last, usually, or on this patch, so... So four seconds up at rank one is really big because like now you have to decide whether you want to max it sooner rather than later to get the mobility, you know, slash your CC at a lower cooldown. Um, I think also a huge change is that the 0.55 seconds uh, flat time is really big because you used to just be able to E flash and then insta ult and they'd, you know, they'd have no time to flash it since uh, you got E flashed on. And now, with this extra time, I think that that's going to be enough time to flash at all times. Um, like, even if you get E-flashed on. Um, this is pretty big. I think this will actually, like, make Gragas a low pick. A low tier pick. Not a low tier, but a pick that will not be happening very often anymore. Because, because these are really big nerfs. And these are... Not these aren't nerfs to like his damage or anything, but they're nerfs to his gank potential. They're nerfs to his CC. They're nerfs to his playmaking potential, um, and I think that's really huge. So, might see the end of Gragas for now. 
Jace buffs, uh, 40 at all ranks makes E a lot easier to use. Uh, although, to be fair, you max this second anyway, so or even sometimes last. So I, I don't think this is a big change. The bigger change is the Mercury Hammer, which will be good in lane and be good for burst uh, if you ever happen to do 1v1s and be in melee range. Uh, I don't think I don't think he's gonna be amazing, but you know this might be able to make him viable. I, I don't think actually no, not viable. He'll be played by like Jace players, is what I think it is. And I don't think anything more than that. Gen nerfs, thank God, like he's really strong right now. They're basically changing his ult to be more of an execute and less of like an initiating tool, which is what it was supposed to be from the beginning. Um, they're making his W do less damage, but more damage to minions, so it's just less damage overall. It's an overall nerf for him. Uh, he'll be able to pick targets off easier since he's going to have better execute potential. Uh, but you're going to see less of Jin, like just ulting from the start of the fight versus 100 HP targets, or 100% HP targets, which is good because that's not what he was designed to do. Um, I think Jin will still be good. Jin is like his like fourth auto mechanic is really really strong and he creates picks with a basic ability which is W instead of like an ultimate like Ash uh, and he he just does a lot of damage like in a burst you don't play it you won't be seeing him like banned anymore I don't think but you'll be seeing him still played in general Jinx buffs uh, I don't think this will fix her problems because her, her problem was never like, you know, her ultimate didn't do enough damage. It's the problem like her laning phase is shit. It's like she's kind of a worse gen with the whole long range thing going on and and Caitlyn really. Uh, her Q nerfs like many, many patches ago destroyed her and I think they're going to have to change that to make her viable. Um, that being said, I think this may like intrigue some people to start playing Jinx again, but I don't think she's gonna be meta for a while. Until she gets more buffs. Cannon changes, this doesn't really mean much. Just attack speed changes or attack missile speed changes. That won't change cannon at all. Malphite buffs. I love Malphite. Everyone knows that. I'm a big fan of my Malphite, but like the W changes don't matter that much. And I'm here to tell you if you play Malphite if you play Malphite and you are maxing Q second you're doing you've been doing it wrong this whole time like you always always max W second on Malphite max E then W then Q not E then Q because you want to get this armor this 30% armor that is a whole lot of armor and they are increasing it and making it do more damage and less cooldown so now even more like please max W second it's much better than Q you get it like the the movement speed absorbing you get from Q is all you need from it. You don't do it for damage. And like, it's a 1.1 durability. Um, that being said, I think Malphite will be played a little more. I'll probably play some Malphite. I already play Malphite, but maybe I'll play him a little more. Um, more specifically against AD characters. We'll see. I'll pro you'll probably see some Malphite videos soon. Um... Morgana, cast range increased on E, this doesn't really mean much, because usually Morgana is standing within range of a black shield anyway, uh, if she thinks that someone's at risk of getting caught. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really mean much. Oriana buffs, uh, this is just like the Draven buff where it's just mana and cooldown, it doesn't mean a whole lot. You might see some Oriana players come out since... Uh, ultimate cooldown slower that means she can make more plays but a 10 second window really isn't enough to say like okay this character is going to be really good mana change doesn't mean much after mid game late game anyway because you have mana at that time you already have enough mana to expend <coughs> poppy buffs uh, this actually might see her start getting played again uh, actually maybe not yet maybe when Nar gets nerfed like if Nara gets nerfs that he needs, like then you'll probably start seeing Poppy. I don't know why I opened up my league. But like the movement speed increase is always really good. Like MS is a really big stat. And percent bonus on armor and magic resist increase is always nice because that just gives her more free stats. Poppy's already a great like, you know, an okay character. And with nerfs on other top laners, 
she can probably make a comeback. So you might see some Poppy. I won't be playing her unless she's like good in the meta, but you might be able to expect that. Ruxai nerfs. I don't think this kills the champion, but six seconds at rank one is pretty huge. Uh, that means she's gonna have less tunnels around the map. That means you're gonna she's gonna have worth you know not as good chase, not as good escape. Uh, and also, uh, that might, you know, I don't know what Rek'Sai's level up first. I know the Q is first, but I don't know whether you max W or E next. Um, I'm going to assume you want to do E, since 6 seconds is a lot, and you're going to want that at lowest cooldown as you can. I don't think this will completely kill Rek'Sai, but you're going to see a lot less Rek'Sai. Um, ult nerfs 30 seconds is a shit ton. It's like GP now, where you're just going to have to get your CDR early so you can ult more. Um, it's it's really hard to say since I don't play Rek'Sai, but you know I see so much Rek'Sai and I think like the Rek'Sai players are going to stop leaning toward Rek'Sai and go more toward like Olaf now or someone that you know hasn't been nerfed. Um, I guess we'll see but I think you'll see a lot less Rek'Sai. Riven buffs, uh, I mean, usually if you're going to die to Riven ult, you're just going to get shit on, like, from the start, because she does so much damage, so I think this change is, like, you know, it's great for Riven players, because, like, now they can ult earlier and still do a lot of damage, but, like, usually if you're going to die to Riven in that, like, 1v1, like, like you're just gonna get shit on anyway is what I found. If a Riven can 1v1 you, usually it's like an overpowering 1v1. Uh, I think this will be bigger, like the bigger change, uh, or the bigger thing around this change is like when Rivens do like those flash Ws like on top of three people and she ults the three of them. It'll just in provide more AoE damage. Hopefully we don't see more Riven players because I don't really like that champion, but you'll probably see more <laughs> players. Rise buffs. Rise is like not figured out yet, so I don't think this will change much at all. <clears throat> uh, Sivir Nurse, this is good because she does a lot of damage with the crit on her W, and now they're just kind of reducing that a little bit with the attack damage uh, ratio going lower. Um, I think she's still going to be alright since she's mainly used for an initiating tool, like. And an, an extra initiating tool with her ult. I think she'll be played less. I don't think she'll be completely out. Uh, I don't think... She actually maybe You know, maybe she'll be balanced after this. It's hard to say since I, you know, I don't play a lot of bot lane either. I just see it picked a lot. Um, she gets less free attack speed on her W2, which is, which is nice. And uh, maybe she'll be, she'll be less of a late game threat at this point, like with these nerfs. They're just late game nerfs. Um, Thresh buffs. This is another one of these small changes which doesn't change a whole lot. But 30 seconds at rank rank uh, 3 is kind of big. It means like you don't have to be sitting around waiting for Thresh cooldowns uh, in the late game. Uh, usually you'll be able to use this in a team fight and by the next time team fight will be up. You won't have to sit around and wait. Um, Thresh needed buffs, but I think Thresh is like relatively balanced, so they'll just be balanced, I guess. Trundle nerfs, like one second at rank one means literally nothing, but three seconds at rank five means a lot because that means like even if you get CDR, it's still going to be a second or two later in CD. And Trundle Pillar is, in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best, basic ability in the game. Um. And this makes his late game pick slash, you know, permanent tr permanent slow slash wall in the late game uh, non-existent anymore. There will be a few seconds in between. Um, some decent Trundle nerfs. I thought Trundle was balanced, but apparently Riot did not. Uh, I'll probably start playing less Trundle now. Uh, that being said, if Tank Meta comes back, he'll probably still be good. Vein buffs, I don't think this will change her because she's still kind of bad. Like, and I say that, but I could be completely off. Like, there is a decent chance that Vayne will become a meta AD carry <laughs> because Q Max is good again. And 
like before you would max W some I don't I don't know what vein players did but like you could do W or Q now it's for sure Q and maybe you'll see more AD builds instead of like Bork attack speed builds uh, and maybe that'll make her good uh, I'm not completely sure since Vayne has been bad for so long but yeah we'll see um, Vigar changes these don't really mean anything five more ability power on killer assist it's like or two more so whatever <coughs> uh, Vi buffs I think this will actually make Vi play more um, like two seconds on Q and on uh, and on passive like at early levels is pretty nice like it makes her a little more you know survive a little easier two seconds is pretty decent for passive two seconds is really good for Q since like uh, she'll use her Q a lot in the early game uh, you might see some Vi. I don't think this will make her meta, but you might see some Vi. Um, and the E change, it doesn't really mean much, since usually by the first time you have it leveled up, like, if you're starting with E, then, which you, I think you usually do, then, uh, you'll start it early enough to get two anyway. And I think that's the whole patch. Uh, turret, actually, no, turret AI... Uh, finally attacks closest champions instead of randomly R like chooses a random champion which is good because that means like if you don't have minions and you're trying to tank a turret it won't just randomly switch to your AD carry it'll switch to whoever's on top of the turret which will most of the time be a frontliner and that'll make uh, you know protecting your squishies easier and it's not just a random turret shot like going on your mid or bot laner and a shit ton of bug fixes but I won't go over that because that's usually irrelevant and they're rare occurrences so that's 6.17 patch thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later